I would like I would like to start by thanking SCORE for inviting me to come and... Wait, wait. I can't see yet. Oh, much better. Okay. Uh, I'm here to talk, I mean, I'm here to talk about uh, a different geography, uh, an a different experience and the role of art, uh, and the discussion about art and its role in public realm in uh, Palestine. Uh, but before I, uh, I start, I want to... Uh, uh, this setting, this venue that we uh, are in, uh, reminded me so much with a discussion uh, that we had once in, uh, in Spain, in, a play in Vitoria, Monte Hermoso, it's a cultural center there. Uh, there was this uh, uh, exhibit called uh, Terra Nada, and uh, I was invited by the curator, her name is Catalina Lozano, and there was a seminar on the side of the uh, exhibition. And there was uh, a Peter Leinbau from the University of Toledo. He's a, a historian, and he uh, wrote a, a recent book called Magna Carta, uh, the Manifesto, uh, and something like, let me remember, uh, liberties and commons, and uh, there's so much about the history of commons and the history of uh, uh, public and private that needs to be really researched before tackling the issue of uh, private and public nowadays, and the idea of the, uh, the, the, the crisis of the social uh, in, uh, uh, in, mod uh, in contemporary uh, life. Uh, the thing that he mentioned that the Magna Carta is a sort of uh, 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 it was terms between the people and uh, King John uh, of England in uh, 1215, uh, where the people were so much uh, annoyed by the continuous uh, pro uh, uh, the lords, they prohibited the people from using the forests. And the Magna Carta was a sort of a decree, a, a declaration between the people and the king. Uh, as well as there was a, uh, something called the forest charter, the, uh, the charter of the forest. And the whole idea was the forest as a resource where people, uh, that plot of land that belongs to the king uh, is a place also for, for people to go pick up sticks, uh, wood for the fire, uh, to build their houses, to live in the forest, also to eat and feed. And so therefore, the forest was the common, the common where people have the access to resources, to fuel, which is nowadays translated into energy, uh, and also a, a place for uh, those who are unfortunate and uh, what we call nowadays as homeless, a place for them to live. Uh, so the basic stuff was really provided for every single individual from the common. So the common was something is uh, owned by the king, but at the end there was access uh, uh, by every uh, single. Uh, so I mean, this, I, this idea of the common has disappeared, in, uh, I mean, especially after the 18th century and the Industrial Revolution and the transformation of uh, uh, cities and the idea of the state and welfare state. And there was a need to transform uh, the common into a sort of a private and a public. The private really regulate, uh, I mean, uh, you know, private, and the public, which is re regulated by uh, the, st uh, the state. The state needs that kind of definition, and also the industry and the, cap uh, the capitalist society needs uh, that kind of definition in order to, uh, uh, for different system of uh, the state, taxation, uh, also the economy, spaces for production, spaces for consumption, etc., etc., and also the, the uh, uh, regulation of resources. So we have really to, to uh, 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 differentiate between, uh, maybe, I mean, yesterday there was uh, some, uh, uh, some people who would really uh, do not want to differentiate. I mean, you know, public is public and uh, we c you can do anything with the public. No, I would say no. And I, and I say it uh, uh, ins uh, insisting on the fact that we in Palestine uh, uh, the idea of a public is something really uh, very aggressive to us because the public has always been regulated by the colonial entity. And uh, so we always tend to trash the public, so we don't care about it. 
Uh, so uh, when people come to Palestine, or some, uh, I mean, uh, uh, they really wonder about why the public is trashed. Because we don't give a damn about the public, it, it's always regulated by the uh, colonial. Uh, so it's, uh, we, we've learned to be private. And the history there lies uh, even uh, 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 the, this linearity between public and private has uh, has a different history. The Ottoman Empire, we have five divisions uh, 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 all, uh, around the Ottoman Empire for land. There was public, the, uh, 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 state-owned uh, uh, land. There was also something called Aradil Waqf, the Waqf land, which is really organized by, it's uh, uh, not the state, but uh, a sort of religious committee that, uh, that can give it for uh, charity or do uh, social, uh, 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 you know, use it for social causes and social ends, or also for public because they used it also for trains uh, in the end of 18th century, beginning, uh, sorry, 19th century, beginning of the 20th century. Uh, so this, uh, and also there was uh, at the Miri land, which is owned by also the uh, big lords, uh, sort of feudalism, but in that land there was also that kind of Magna Carta uh, sort of like contract between people and uh, the Lord, uh, the villages was mostly Miri land. Nobody owned the land. Uh, everybody worked in the land. Nobody defined where the land is. So uh, uh, there was no uh, problem of housing, uh, where to build your house, because uh, you built it uh, al along with the natural expansion of the villages. And uh, also the idea of you can also take a land if, if, you, if you don't have anything to do. You take a land, you plant it, and you get the revenues from the land. You live from the land. So the idea of the basic that has been uh, uh, provided by that kind of contract between the people and the uh, uh, government at that time. So uh, I think with Europe and what's ha what was happening at a certain time in the Ottoman uh, Empire, there was a sort of... Uh, uh, definition of a common, which is really something not private and not public, and it, we deserve to really further the expansion, uh, further research in that kind of direction. Well, I'm going to talk about something else now. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I was in inspired by yesterday's and today's uh, uh, interventions. Uh, I'm going to talk more about uh, uh, a new form of, at least in Palestine, uh, a new form of uh, 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 exhi exhibitions. Uh, it's an exhibition that started three years ago uh, by uh, in investigating the ethnographic history of uh, city, a city, uh, Jerusalem as a city, and it was a collection of you know items, uh, memories, narratives, and also objects from uh, the families of Jerusalem and yeah, expressing the cultural. Uh, the history of uh, 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 the social history of this the city, and then yes, uh, uh, last year I was invited to co-curate that exhibition with uh, together with Vera Tamari, uh, a well-known uh, Palestinian artist from uh, the 80s, um, and we decided to transform the whole exhibition into uh, instead of only uh, presenting the social history, uh, trying to find out. Uh, uh, to use the exhibition as uh, a medium to investigate uh, the city and see uh, uh, the change and the transformation, which is really immense and happening so fast in the city, and everybody is itching their minds about what's going on. Uh, uh, I don't know, uh, since Oslo ag uh, agreement in the mid-90s, uh, there was a, a total change of uh, what, uh, what is known as Palestinian city, especially Ramallah, uh, and we decided, therefore, to take Ramallah as an example. Uh, Ramallah has become, uh, you know, uh, an, ex uh, an explosion of uh, uh, housing, uh, an explosion because everybody, uh, the returnees came back to Ramallah, uh, and Ramallah was not prepared to accommodate all that kind of influx of people coming back. And then also uh, the Palestinian Authority took Ramallah as a place uh, to, uh, you know, to uh, govern uh, the West Bank. And uh, therefore there was lots of governmental institutions and that entails people and families moving to work in, uh, in Ramallah within these uh, institutions. And therefore the demand on housing was really high. And suddenly Ramallah has become something like 
uh, parts of Ramallah has become something like that. And then there was a big shock uh, about the idea of a home and housing. And you know, uh, the whole idea of uh, living in Palestine as a collective uh, should really mean something more than uh, stacking people in in such kind of housing project. So that was uh, that was something that we were very interested in uh, questioning. Uh, uh, the uh, other issues that has also led to the transformation is the also the uh, uh, Palestinian Authority that decided that neoliberal. Uh, economy, uh, uh, free market is the solution for a Palestinian state because uh, it will prove to the whole world that Palestinians are capable of running uh, uh, a future state and also becoming part of the, uh, uh, in, uh, the economy, global economy. And that entails so many uh, changes. Uh, first of all, the, the openness towards the uh, Arab investment inside of uh, Palestine, from the Gulf in, in particular. And uh, that brought uh, mega projects to uh, cities like Ramallah. And for us, these huge edifices, uh, these huge structures uh, and uh, architectural images are foreign to us. And uh, there was no sort of uh, uh, deliberation or debate between the people and that kind of uh, new uh, form of modernity that was imposed on uh, Palestinian cities. The second thing is the, uh, these projects, the cities, uh, I mean, if you look at the cities and the change in the cities, architecture as uh, you know, an indicator of what's happening uh, uh, in a city, you can see that uh, only the investment uh, tackled you know, new uh, uh, modern structures, and it, it didn't really touch on social, uh, social uh, uh, functions. We do, uh, instead of having new cinemas, new theaters, and new cultural uh, uh, structures, uh, infrastructure, uh, it's only banks, it's only business towers and centers, and new housing mega projects, uh, which you can call uh, as a collective in, in yesterday definition, but they're not a collective uh, uh, in our definition. It's, it's more like gated communities and more like camps within the cities. The city has become, instead of an organic uh, fabric, it just, it, it's been divided like Dubai. You have the, uh, I don't know what, sports city, and then you have an intermediate, uh, I don't know, media city. And so it's just small uh, speckles of uh, 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 ter territorial speckles inside the, the uh, city, which is really def uh, make, it, make it more uh, fragmented. And for us, fragmentation is a, pro a produce of uh, the colonial entity because, you know, the West Bank has been fragmented and the political structure, Hamas and Fatah, is a fragmentation to uh, Gaza territorially. West Bank is also another fragmentation. And the cities, uh, uh, the uh, isolation of cities was also a fragmentation. And now within one city, there's also another fragmentation, which is the... Uh, 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 those new uh, uh, projects, uh, especially in particular housing. So what we did is that we decided to call the exhibition Ramallah the fairest of them all. It's like mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Uh, and the idea is the mirror, actually, because uh, we, we think that art is a medium of producing alternative knowledge uh, for people, uh, it's it's like a mirror where society can look through uh, the pro uh, the produce uh, the product production of art and culture, and uh, you know criticize uh, see the society's self inside that mirror and uh, have so, so sort of a self criticism, uh, uh, looking at uh, looking at the details of what the society has become of, and uh, uh, reflect on uh, what uh, what one can see through art through the mirror, let's say. And uh, therefore, we find it really interesting also to uh, question the fairness of Ramallah. And you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the word fairness, is it fair beauty or fair white or fair, uh, uh, fair I don't know. Uh, so it's just that, uh, because the Arabic word is really different, fitna, uh, it, it has, uh, it has dub double meanings, fitna, corruption as well. So it <laughs> So uh, we try to play with the word and also uh, uh, use the idea of uh, the mirror, which we, uh, 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 which we wanted to emphasize so much in that exhibition. Therefore, we invited uh, three groups of artists. Uh, 
uh, a collective called uh, Ramallah Syndrome. Uh, and then uh, uh, also an artist, Ines Yassin, she's working with uh, cultural uh, structures, which uh, for me is also important. What happened in Ramallah is the, t the idea of tabula rasa, as if Ramallah uh, was not there in the history and the neoliberal economy is really destroying everything and starting anew. Uh, this, everything is starting anew as if we, did, we, we never existed before the neoliberal, uh, ne uh, neoliberal uh, processes inside uh, Palestine and everything has been really reconstructed from the beginning and the history was destroyed. So all these uh, heritage uh, architecture and all these uh, uh, you know, symbolic places and spaces have been destroyed because of exchange value, because now lands in, uh, for example, uh, in, uh, mid, uh, in uh, the center of Ramallah, there's a land that costs $24 million. And for us, that's, uh, that's also something that uh, we're, we're very uh, shocked to hear m most of the time. And the answer is always that this is the free market. This is the way, uh, uh, the way it should be done because we want to become part of the global economy. And 24 millions for us in the center of Ramallah, which we think that it's not a very important city and has never been, uh, is something really uh, uh, wild. Uh, well, uh, uh, so uh, this is another symptom, is the destruction of the heritage and the exchange value which has uh, transformed the whole value system of society uh, from, uh, from uh, cultural value and social meaning of uh, objects, things and spaces in the city into an exchange value. Uh, the, the, uh, it, so, uh, so many things are disappearing and the city is rapidly changing uh, uh, because of that. Uh, and therefore, there's a death of the political project which we, we all uh, were, were aiming at, the liberation of, uh, from occupation and now everybody is really running, uh, I mean, there's another new liberal project of individualism and you know debt through banking the banking are proliferating in Palestine in a strange way and now everybody has a, a sort of a, a, they can go to a bank and take you know uh, whatever uh, uh, loan for whatever thing they uh, like to do and everybody's really thinking how to uh, to get more money to pay the banks and now the whole idea of the political project and the collective project has been collapsing. Uh, the first group of artists uh, 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 worked on something called a riyad. Emily Jasser, a well-known Palestinian artist, uh, I was a collaborator with, uh, with her on that project, um, assumed uh, a new uh, fictional uh, real estate company called Ariad. Ariad has the, uh, several connotations. Ariad means, you know, the Riyadh, uh, the capital of Saudi Arabia, and uh, which we think that, I mean, the Gulf money is uh, something that is really affecting that, uh, 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 I mean, Palestine. So. It fits so much, and then Ariad means also the uh, 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 gardens of paradise. And most of the new projects have these kind of names, like a, a promise of a false paradise. You know, Ariad, uh, something, a Rihan, a Sindian. Everything has a, a connotation of a paradise. So we decided that Ariad is a perfect name for us because it, it holds both the, the origin of the money and also the connotation of uh, paradise. And then we uh, uh, sort of uh, emulated a logo of a well-known real estate company, private company, which is Rawabi. Uh, now, maybe some of you heard about the new city which is happening in Palestine, and we all, till now, we're trying to uh, su uh, survive the shock that do we need a new city in Palestine? And, uh, uh, but the uh, neoliberal economy is saying, uh, the investors are saying, yes, we need. And if you know that the distance from one city to the other city is less than one hour drive and in between there are like uh, tens and tens of villages so I mean you can't really drive in Palestine without seeing a village or something but then suddenly I don't know where they c came up with that space but they wanted to uh, do a new city because uh, uh, it's the first Palestinian settlement they call it as well so see the idea of settlement and, and they're happy about that so much. Uh, 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 why we selected Rawabi? Because Rawabi is a very critical project, uh, at least uh, for us, and we think that uh, 
this is the, uh, it's a gated community. Uh, the uh, affordability of housing in that project is, uh, 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 this is not Arawabi, this is Ramallah, by the way. Uh, uh, the affordability of the housing project, maybe I have uh, something about it. Uh, yeah, this is a 3D model of part of the Rawabi down there. Uh, the affordability of the housing project there is really uh, uh, fictional because uh, in order to own there, uh, you have to have a loan from the bank, and if you want to have a loan with the bank with, the, with that kind of interest rate, you have, I mean, those people who have uh, less money, they have to pay three times the real amount, uh, um, uh, the real cost of uh, a house. While those who are rich, they can really pay one time uh, immediately. So I mean that kind of. Uh, uh, and then uh, the the average income in Palestine is eight hundred dollars per month. Uh, while to take a bank in the uh, loan in a bank, you have to have more than one thousand something. So I mean, uh, uh, for housing. So you you can see that the whole idea of the housing system was really organized for upper middle class or for second invest for invest uh, second investment. Or also they think that maybe uh, uh, the returnees, the rich returnees, would uh, after a final solution would come and occupy. Uh, these uh, spaces. So uh, therefore, I mean, it's a social segregation, it's a sort of a gated community uh, uh, that uh, will uh, be, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, marginalizing the villages around it. Because uh, to do this project as well, they had to uh, produce a new law that's signed by the cabinet of ministers and also the president of uh, uh, Abu Mazen. And that uh, it states that the Rawabi, the private company, is entitled to expropriate land for private use. Uh, so there, there's a change of law, and that kind of law that normally we have is related to the Israelis who are really always trying to, uh, the occupation is trying to expropriate land for public, they say that this is for uh, uh, roads and this is for forests and stuff like that. So for public use, they expropriate land, and now the Palestinian Authority is taking private land for uh, the, uh, as, as a public, uh, uh, under a public uh, definition. Uh, if we look at Rawabi as well, uh, most of the housing projects in Palestine has become something like a replica of, uh, of settlements. Uh, 10 minutes, wow, I didn't start yet. I haven't started yet. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so uh, there's also a reproduction of the colonial imagery uh, which, uh, uh, which we can see in, in these housing projects. Uh, this is another housing project called uh, the Diplomats Housing Project. Only diplomats live there and the rest of, I mean, they, it's a top of the hill. Uh, the same as a settlement, and if you compare it with existing settlement like uh, Bitar uh, Elite uh, near Bethlehem, you find it's almost the same. And for us, that's incredible because we are uh, we we are uh, reaching a point where we're replicating a colonial imagery without thinking about the uh, visual cultural production uh, in Palestine. And for us, uh, that kind of disconnection between the production of space uh, engaged by by the uh, investors and also the uh, the uh, uh, the way people want their space doesn't exist and part partially because of the political system we have which is not functioning we don't have a, par a parliament the parliament is not working so our voices in the par parliament I mean we don't have a people voice over our gov uh, our uh, administrators not government uh, so this is another thing which is really uh, uh, causing that kind of disruption, the, the deficiency of the uh, uh, governance of the place. Uh, this is another housing project, and this is the, another colony upstairs, up there. So uh, we decided in this project to um, uh, use uh, billboards as a medium. And why billboards? Because there's a history of uh, billboards as a medium for interaction between the people and what is really uh, stated on the billboard by the uh, investors and by the, all these uh, people who put advertisements. Uh, this used to be Strauss uh, ice cream, which is, uh, um, which is uh, sort of, uh, there's a, a division in Israel and 
uh, and they're packing the ice cream there or doing the ice cream there and they're advertising in the middle of Ramallah and in 2000 something and then suddenly some activists didn't like that billboard so much and uh, he changed uh, the, uh, you, you see the Arabic uh, uh, sentence there, this is really uh, engaged by somebody who uh, uh, placed a sticker over the original text. The original text was really something that is uh, really saying, oh, yum, it's, it's delicious, we love it, or something like that. So the activist, somebody till now unknown, has placed something, hmm, ice cream with the taste of occupation. And, <laughs> And for us, that was something engaging, very engaging as a billboard, a billboard as a medium of expression. The second one was an NGO uh, uh, that we have that was promoting an, uh, uh, a homeland, a democratic homeland where land for two people. Uh, so it was promoting the political idea of having uh, a one-state solution for two people. And of course, people were very angry because they don't tolerate that stuff most of the time. So uh, this is another one, one of their... So they, uh, they sprayed on it with words of uh, uh, deception and uh, collaboration with the Israelis. So the, the billboard has become a medium where people reflected on... Uh, 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 on what's on it, the message on it. Uh, the one near my university, Bizet University, was burned the second day. It was burned. Uh, I took the camera in order to go and have some uh, uh, photos, and then suddenly the next day I didn't find it. It was totally burned. Uh, um, um, so we decided that a Riyadh company should really uh, do something, uh, advertise something in the city. So we decided to knock down the old vegetable market and place a big high rise tower and see how people would react to that. Uh, uh, so uh, the text says something like that. A Riyadh tower will, uh, uh, will achieve your dreams of uh, walking on clean and shiny uh, uh, pavements uh, while you shop. Uh, a Riyadh will give you a chance to mix with uh, a state-of-the-art, uh, no, a cream de la creme of uh, uh, businessmen from uh, the Arab countries and also foreigners. A Riyadh is a, a project to destroy the vegetable market of Ramallah. Uh, and if you want a visa from Israel, for those of you who are businessmen from the Gulf region, it's easy to be done. Um, <laughs> Uh, so, and we, we sort of uh, placed it, uh, we wanted to place it near the location, but we couldn't because we discovered that this is another city's uh, territorial. So we, we placed it in uh, uh, the Lion Square, it's in the middle of Ramallah, and uh, people were spitting on us, at us uh, at some time, and uh, s uh, some people were very angry, and uh, uh, they just looked and they were frustrated, and other people came and they were happy, like, oh, finally, we're becoming Dubai. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, with that kind of, with that kind of installation, public intervention, we, we, we really tested the, uh, tested the reaction of people towards projects more uh, uh, coming closer to their premises more than those projects outside which are really built right now and we wanted to see uh, the reaction. The other one was also for the same company, fictional, called a Riyadh housing project and it goes something like that. Uh, 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 royal villas gated and equipped with the state-of-the-art security and surveillance systems. A Riyadh, it's the dream of your family to live in the heart of Ramallah, the, uh, on the uh, remnants of uh, the historic center of Ramallah. We built the, the best villas ever, beautiful. Uh, a Riyadh will give you uh, happiness and will achieve your dreams within uh, the, uh, the uh, high security uh, environment. Live happily in the Riyadh uh, where the water, the green and the lo lovely people were. And then gardens are uh, donated by the JNF because there was a big scandal that J JNF has donated 
uh, for the Rawabi project, the big city, uh, some thousands, thousand or three thousand trees, and there was a big uh, scandal about that. So we also t wanted to uh, place it on and see what the, how the people would react. And those houses were uh, copied from the exact houses of the settlement, and it was produced uh, uh, by an architect stu student of mine, and we tried to copy the house of the settlement and uh, uh, produce that kind of uh, neighborhood. Uh, nobody realized, nobody noticed that it's a settlement house, and for us that was really uh, a little bit uh, horrific. Uh, 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 because the consciousness about the visual culture was a little bit lost in that kind of uh, uh, visual influx of modernity that we're really having. People cannot really absorb what's happening because the change is rapid and very fast. Uh, 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 this one was really destroyed the second day. <laughs> Uh, people were very angry and uh, they uh, came with a knife and uh, we heard the story that, and they've just torn it down because it's in the heart of where they live at the end and we discovered that, I mean, from the discussion with people that it seems that uh, we're a little bit numb unless something is really touching us and we lost the, the value of being a little bit... Uh, 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 we have, uh, you know, to see in, into the future and really try to predict what's coming. We just react, to, uh, uh, react. To, I mean, we react to only to things that is happening to us directly. How much do I have? Five minutes, please. Okay, small five minutes. Um, <laughs> the second project is by Inas Yassin, and this is a poster of a film from uh, the 60s, Abdel Halim, a very famous uh, Egyptian actor, trying to kiss uh, Nadia Lutfi, and, uh, and that was the poster for a film called Abi Fawqa Shajara. And uh, while she was studying the destruction of the cinemas in Ramallah, Inas found this poster still hanging on the wall, uh, uh, you know, there's a history of uh, cinemas in uh, the city since uh, the 30s, and the, we had five cinemas, major cinemas, in, in a small town like Ramallah. Uh, and uh, and uh, people have the culture of going every day to the cinema, which stopped eventually after the occupation and after also the intifada, because uh, you know, any festivities or any pleasure became in, in and, and that's the problem of uh, resistance and also a sort of a re revolution. Uh, it suppresses uh, sort of, uh, that kind of cultural interactions. Uh, uh, so what Inas done is that uh, she was very sad because of the cinema is the last cinema and now it's in the process of being transformed into a shopping mall. Uh, so she, uh, uh, she wanted to show the same film in the same, uh, 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 you know, uh, cinema space uh, within the rubbles around her in order to really reflect about the glory of the cinema at that time where you have velvet, red, and, you know, people dressing up and lovers are engaging, you know, and, no and nowadays where it's rubble and it's really becoming a, a, a sort of a shopping mall destroyed for the, uh, the sake of the shopping mall. I don't want to talk about these. Uh, this is, uh, and it happened to other cinemas, I don't want to talk about that. Um, so this is the cinema, and uh, uh, so the owner, of, uh, the, the, the owner barricaded the cinema immediately with uh, corrugated sheets, metal sheets, and he uh, didn't allow her to do that, so she transformed the whole film into a soundtrack and placed it behind uh, the sheets, and uh, she insisted on the invitations. She went all over the city and she invited all the people for f uh, free viewing of uh, that film uh, and gathered lots of people for, uh, 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 you know, from all over the city in order to, uh, at eight o'clock to see that, uh, watch that movie. Um, the problem is that next day the posters were taken off and when she investigated in that fact, those same people who went to see that movie in the 60s uh, and early 70s were the same people who took it off because the value has changed in the Palestinian society and they think that the kiss is un inappropriate anymore. So it was an, uh, appropriate at a certain stage and then inappropriate uh, 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 at
at the moment. And that shows also a sort of a transformation in the Palestinian society. And uh, there's lots of investigation on that. I don't want to talk about it right now. So uh, that's the event, all the people trying to break through the uh, trying to get inside because they hear the soundtrack of the movie but they can't get there and they don't know that it's, a, it's, just, the install it's just the whole idea of the project. So they gathered and they started singing and then the police came and they uh, uh, asked them to uh, uh, leave and next day there was a huge article in the newspaper talking about the history of cinemas and the destruction of uh, 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 such cultural heritage places, social history spaces, and uh, so th therefore art was provoking a little bit and it was beyond uh, the reproduction of aesthetics for the sake of the reproduction of aesthetics was really uh, an instigator, uh, sort of an active role in the society where artists used the, his pitiful position and also the time, the luxury of time that he has or she has in order to really engage with people. Uh, instead of really spending the time at her studio with herself and with her uh, own aesthetics. Uh, and this is, it's really blurry, but kids trying to get inside. The last one, which is really quickly, in two minutes, Ramallah Syndrome is a group of architects, artists, uh, uh, urban, uh, urbanists, uh, uh, planners, uh, who gathered uh, because they saw that Ramallah is becoming a syndrome. You know, there's a Jerusalem syndrome, which means that uh, uh, all the pil pilgrims coming from uh, uh, to Jerusalem, uh, they, when they reach Jerusalem, they have this sort of psychological uh, uh, state of mind. They think that God would talk to them, uh, uh, and they really wear white stuff and start chanting in the streets, uh, uh, some religious stuff as well, so, uh, and they cry and cry and cry. And I think it's a syndrome of the city, so we think Ramallah is a syndrome. Ramallah is a syndrome because we think that people are hallucinating uh, uh, because they think that they're living normally, as if occupation is not there and, uh, and they are satisfied, they have their own state now. So that's the, uh, uh, the, the form of Ramallah gives you an impression that everything is all right, there's no occupation, you don't see them physically uh, at least. Uh, but you see that people are really uh, not thinking on in the daily practices about the uh, occupation as much as thinking about how much money they want to make. And especially the middle class and upper middle class, they uh, think about businesses, uh, holidays, uh, think about uh, partying, think about, you know, it's like the normal, every no normal city in the world. But then the specificity of uh, the city is it's still under occupation. And and that is lost somehow. So we were we were discussing that uh, uh, between us, and the first our first uh, uh, conversation was recorded, and it was transformed into a sound installation that we had it in a collateral exhibition in Venice, uh, 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 not uh, the fifty third, the fifty third, uh, which is uh, some years ago. Uh, so it was a sound installation. Uh, recorded about our voices really discussing uh, what's happening and questioning Ramallah and its hallucination. Uh, these are things that I wanted to talk about, the banks and blah, 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 and the, the army that you can see. it. So it's normal. And the nightlife, which is everybody's talking about, the nightlife of Ramallah, Kaman. I mean, even people from Tel Aviv uh, think it's very exotic to go and have some, uh, some drinks in Ramallah. Uh, uh, well, uh, for the exhibition, we decided to have a canvas uh, s uh, written with all the questions that we have. Is Ramallah the capital? What's wrong about having a normal life in Ramallah? Uh, is Jerusalem the capital? Uh, what's the difference between New York and Ramallah? These are questions that came up for, uh, from our discussion. And we decided to spread them all over the public space. But we think we thought that public space is not public space anymore. It doesn't have its political uh, uh, agenda anymore. So uh, we sit in, uh, in our houses on our TVs in order to listen to politics. And we don't engage with people on the streets in politics because 
politics is for TVs in the, uh, in the house, so it became more confined to the household, the politics, while it should be part of the street uh, uh, practices. And uh, uh, the whole tr city has been transformed onto, uh, in, only into uh, vitrine, vitrines for the uh, economy and the consumption. So we said that the best left uh, social spaces, uh, public spaces, uh, for deliberation is uh, uh, only two, uh, one minute. Two minutes. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, the best thing to do is really to put them in coffee shops because that's the place where people sit, talk, and spend time with the others and listening to the conversations of the other tables. So we thought that okay, let's really divide the uh, the. Uh, coffee shops uh, between, uh, I mean, f from the different social groups. So we went to very popular uh, 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 coffee shops where you have the old people from the old generation still playing cards there. Uh, and then we went also to the upper middle class, uh, you know, uh, uh, stylish. And, uh, you know, you go there, you think that you really uh, have to wear a Gucci in order to go inside. Uh, so we, we tried to diversify the uh, selection of coffee shops and that was a heck of an experience because we, f we were shocked by the, uh, uh, our findings. Some people did not want us to put that kind of uh, uh, questions inside and they are sim simple question and we thought that most of Palestinians still thinking about that but then when you engage in the economy and economy has become a sort of uh, uh, the vitality of your life, you don't want to hear that, these question anymore because it's disrupt, disrupt the uh, revenue and the flow of uh, uh, income and it, uh, so uh, so uh, uh, the popular level was more accepting. I mean, we had acceptance from there, so they didn't really mind about what's on the wall. And they, so, some of the old men would look at the question and said, uh, "Too late for that question." <laughs> or, uh, or yes, uh, I mean, and then some of them were trying uh, also to give us their historical narrative about things that has to do with connectivity, as Ramallah was really connected to Beirut, to uh, Cairo, to Damascus, and people were flowing. Now we cannot do that anymore. Uh, uh, so we placed them in several places and uh, we got several discussions upon several issues. I, don't, I, I want to cut the time short uh, because I don't have uh, more time, but maybe in the discussion we can talk more about uh, these projects. Um, I, I think uh, I'll, I'll leave it to you right now. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Yazid. And as often in the case uh, in these kind of symposium, there, there's always short uh, time, I'm sorry. But through questions, uh, I think we can uh, get some more clarity. You were mentioning at the end, um, uh, if we look actually at the two earlier presentations, one really there's this uh, alternative or uh, a sort of initiative being taken. Uh, the second presentation really dealt with kind of an analysis of a situation. Uh, but at a certain point even said uh, not to have an answer to, to all the questions. Here questions are really being placed uh, within this, this public realm, this public sphere. Although I hear in your, in your presentation that public sphere isn't always clearly defined. Everyone has a different understanding of that. It's not the street, but as you point out in the end, it's the coffee shop. Um, the intention then behind that, can you, can you speak of a, a result that, that you're looking for? And if so, what, what would that be? Uh, well, uh, part of the uh, part of the uh, the motives that we had in order to put these uh, in the streets is that we were so much as a group uh, been uh, criticized as uh, intellectuals trying to really make another kind of a project. Uh, so the idea was really to uh, engage with these questions instead of really knowing each other and really getting the, uh, there is, um, I mean, we know each other quite well and we know each uh, one's position uh, politically and uh, theoretically. So we decided that we move them there to the people in order to really take them, engage with them and spread them in a sort of a way. And in our uh, investigation, certain restaurants, for example, have been banning us from put, placing uh, uh, the uh, uh, canvas inside the questions inside saying that we are a restaurant that we have so many of the Palestinian officials dining and lunching at. Uh, uh, we cannot really 
uh, let them see is Ramallah under occupation because the whole idea of the Palestinian Authority is to a sort of uh, 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 replacement of occupation and actually literally for us uh, as a group we think that the, uh, the, the idea of the creation of the Palestinian Authority is a sort of a continuation of a different form of the Israeli uh, uh, occupation because they are limited uh, politically uh, and also economically and in terms of decision making on the ground in spatial production by the uh, decrees and the uh, 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 you know the power of the Israelis and decision making of the Israelis and the Americans the idea of the death of public space is very important for for me and uh, as I've studied in Europe and I've been traveling a lot in Europe I thought I, I think that uh, there's a sort of uh, crisis in the death of politics from the public space. I mean, uh, public space used to host people coming and really debating uh, to the public their uh, ideological, uh, uh, you know... Uh, the agora, as it were, where people get together. Exactly. So people would gather and hear and listen the different version, alternative uh, versions of what's happening from the mainstream. And that is lost everywhere. So TVs have become a sort of... A replacement and you can have it in the public space uh, in your private space and then you react to what's happening on TV only with the people around you instead of having them in public space uh, we used to have TVs in coffee shops because they were very expensive so all the uh, all the neighborhood and all the city was uh, re all, all yani, uh, gathering around in that coffee shop and reflecting on what's happening nowadays you don't have that uh, if you want to do that, you're either arrested, even in, in, in uh, the West Bank, if you want to have a sort of uh, a demonstration against the Israeli occupation, you need to have a permit. And for us, that's really crazy. I mean, we're still under occupation and we are really entitled off demonstrating against our occupy, but then you have to have a permit because there's now a political entity replacing the governance of public space uh, other than the Israelis. So is, is that then also, uh, uh, to get back to the, the strategy and the, the, the results actually you're looking for is uh, circumventing this the regulation of uh, approaching people with an opinion, with their position within the public realm uh, and, and the circumstances that they're in, politically, socially, economically. Yeah, it's just the interruption of the uh, nowadays use of uh, social spaces uh, instead of really people talking always about their economic um, misfortune and uh, the way they want to get more money because you hear it so much in the West Bank, we want more money, we want a bigger salary, we want a car, we want a house. So that's the sort of language that you hear nowadays so much in uh, in the West Bank and Gaza, and we've, uh, because of the death of the political and the emergence of the neoliberal project. Uh, so we think that we want to interrupt that, and we want to really send back a reminder to the uh, uh, minds of people that there are questions still to be questioned and ask about the uh, position of this transformation, which is for us uh, a syndrome, and it's not reality. So they have to think and wake up and uh, realize that kind of hallucination. Are there any questions from uh, the audience for Yazid? There's a question in the back. I'm really interested in the response to the kiss and that response to the kiss in the cinema poster. Um, I can think and I can understand why, but for you as an artistic in intervention, uh, was that something you had anticipated? And I'm referencing that in the context of your comment about the prick, the pain, that makes the community awake. The notion, and again from Cinderella, the kiss that awakes, okay. The last part. Um, uh, the last we, part because the mic, mic was a little bit Is back. there a mic with a little bit less feedback uh, to do the question again? <laughs> it's the notion of the kiss. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's being forbidden within certain cultures. And, and re referencing the fairy tale where the kiss awakes the princess. The princess, of course, being political realization. I'm wondering, have you worked oh, yeah. on that? Oh, okay. okay. That, was, um, that was one of the projects. The idea of the princess and uh, uh, the fairy tale was more referring to the hallucination part. It's just that it's... Uh, uh, 
Because the kiss, I mean, the connotation of a kiss in Ramallah, I would really translate it into uh, other uh, things, other equations, is that the nightlife is very crazy. It's as if, if you want to party in Ramallah, as if it's the final party before Armageddon. It just, uh, 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 people are really hardly, do, I mean, they're really forcing it. And, you know, I was, uh, I mean, I was, when I came back from Germany and uh, I started living in Ramallah, I was shocked to the fact that uh, I, I, I saw people are overdoing it as if it's the last thing. And I think that has to do with really running away and uh, trying to uh, force the normality of life uh, another time. And the younger generation are very affected for, uh, from uh, TV and the media and the way they really see the other generations. Uh, so uh, the idea of uh, the kiss, uh, I mean, it's very important, but then the older generations who has been uh, 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 you know, uh, confining what is society nowadays should look like uh, took it off. That's interesting what you mentioned because on the one hand you, you mentioned that there is a, uh, a wish or perhaps a sort of a, a conscious uh, denial of the political situation in which people find themselves. On the other hand, in this nightlife situation, there is a communal, albeit perhaps as compartments on the dance floor, yet celebrating together as if uh, they're aware of the, the, the acute situation that they're in. That seems very paradoxical. Uh, yeah, yes, I mean, uh, paradox is all about what's happening nowadays. I mean, uh, the division, the, the uh, society, the social structure is really uh, still under, uh, yani reaching its equilibrium. It's just really uh, changing rapidly. But then economy is part of that kind of nightlife. Nightlife has become part of uh, the economy. And it's really promoted by the economy and protected by the political entity at the same time. Because that's, that's another phase that the uh, Palestinian Authority want to show the world that we are really normal. We are uh, part of, uh, we can become part of the global uh, at the end. Uh, at, the, at the second end, there's conservatism and at, in the same society and there's a contradiction uh, between these two ends, Any other questions from the audience? It's the last one. I imagine we're all a little bit hungry as well. Just wait for the microphone if you don't mind. And if you don't mind, stand up as well, please. Yeah, it works. Um, I was fascinated by, um, uh, uh, because you tried to um, um, raise these questions in the, in, in the population uh, of uh, Ramallah. Um, you used, um, or the exhibition used these uh, billboards. Um, uh, so I was fascinated by um, how um, that's also the, uh, the way, ways of communication of the neoliberal system to sort of implement uh, wishes or demands. And uh, my question is, um, do you think um, it's uh, useful to use these ways of communication to also uh, create a demand for this knowledge? Uh, I think the, uh, the, the nice thing about billboards becoming part of the liberal market is that you can use them for uh, whatever thing, yeah, as, as long as it doesn't really uh, touches the uh, uh, social, uh, I mean, taboos, uh, you know, nakedness, uh, nudity, blah, blah, blah. I think maybe we should really try once with the nudity because, I mean, you buy it and you can, uh, sometimes they don't look at what they produce. Um, um, uh, I think uh, several, several alternative groups have been using uh, the billboards as text uh, to, uh, uh, to criticize what's happening. So it's, it's not, we are using it in a different way. Uh, but uh, there's several people using it politically to put a statement, a political statement. So sometimes you find it all with a text only. And it just criticizes uh, some political uh, uh, thing. I mean, this, on the social level, you don't find it because, I mean, it costs money to uh, place a billboard. And uh, 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 it, it's costly. So only if you are organized within an organization that has money for that, you can do it. And the privilege of an artist another time is that... Uh, uh, as an individual, he's really entitled to funds, uh, sort of funds, because of his pitiful position. So, 
privileged. Uh, <laughs> privileged. Uh, therefore, uh, you can use it also without uh, being a part of it. I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, but the problem again is that the whole city is full with billboards. I mean, whenever you uh, uh, turn your head, it's full with billboards, and sometimes you can't read everything, and you don't want to look. It's really polluted with uh, billboards. They're everywhere, and everybody's using them, and it's, uh, so it's a, a, little bit, a, a little bit tricky to know where to put your billboard and what to write on it. And, uh, but yes, uh, so many Palestinian artists are using billboards as a medium of communication. We're going to uh, leave it at that, Yazid. Thank you very much for your presentation.